Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We are on the verge of hitting 40,000 subscribers so everybody do your part make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel before we get started and we have to talk about my Patriot Supply because as Americans we need to be prepared and that includes avoiding the long lines at the grocery store by stocking up on disaster food supply and there is no better disaster food kit than the ones over at American Made My Patriot Supply. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save up to $100 on a four-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithreadyeagle.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithreadyeagle.com. That is preparewithreadyeagle.com. And we have to talk again about the 2020 presidential election. And we see a lot of polls that have Donald Trump down. I think in the aggregate, he's down by 9%. However, it's fairly early on. We can't just simply go off of what a couple of random polls say. And I'm going to show you why it's going to come down to three states no matter what, because it's probably going to be a close election. And don't take this as definitive evidence. I think Trump has a fighting chance to win New Hampshire, fighting chance to win Michigan, potentially even Nevada. Um, if he's able to narrow the gap in the polling, cut that in half, then he's got chance that, you know, all of the uh, undecided voters typically come aboard the incumbent at the end. So you can't take the definitive polling analysis for what it's worth, especially after a one-term president, especially if you look at 2012, you can see that evidence there. So don't take the polls even now at face value. Don't even take the polls on election day as definitive face value when it comes down to swing states. But the key thing here, and I'll talk about the map, is it's going to come down to just a few states. Florida is probably going to go to the president. I think a lot of people understand that by now. The right understands it. The left understands it. I don't really care what a lot of the early polls say. Florida and North Carolina, where he's actually up in the average right now, despite being down nationally, by, what is it, 9%? Yeah, North Carolina is going to go to Trump. Florida loves incumbents, especially Republican incumbents. It's probably going to go for Donald Trump. It come November, it's his home state. Republicans actually improved there in some instances in the midterm election. So uh, it's safe to say that right now this map is going to be 248-248. I think Nebraska second, if you look at the primary turnout, was very favorable to the Republicans. I would assume Trump is going to be able to hold that, especially if he's holding states like North Carolina, Florida. He'll probably hold Nebraska's second district. I think that in some of the you know ex-urban areas in the district, he might do even better than what he did in 2016 as the third party vote share comes home. So this leaves the election to three states, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Arizona are basically three different states. Wisconsin is closer to Pennsylvania. They're closer to each other than really what Arizona is. Arizona is an anomaly, and Trump's going to have to campaign a little bit differently and we're going to analyze Arizona in 2016. So here was Arizona in 2016. Donald Trump underperformed Mitt Romney in places like Maricopa County, um, Yuma, and uh, he did a little bit better in places like Prescott, which is Yapavai County, and um, Clinton and Trump did basically the same in the rural parts of the state as past elections. Now, the kicker is... Hillary Clinton did not do very much better than Barack Obama. A Democrat really has not cracked that 45% margin since Bill Clinton in 1996 when he was the last Democrat to win the state of Arizona. And a lot of third-party voters, Gary Johnson voters, other voters, um, even a good amount of Jill Stein voters would have actually favored Trump and gone more to Trump. I feel like if this was a two-way race, Trump would have won it by six to seven points. And Trump has made gains with some of these people. Hypothetically speaking, from not looking at the national polls, not looking at any polls, you would say, okay, maybe Trump would actually improve. And the state did vote to the right of the country in the midterms in the House elections by five to six points. So it's probably not going to trend relatively to the national average too much to the left. But you do have an issue with Phoenix growing. You have a lot of people moving there from places like New York. You have a lot of immigrants coming over from Mexico, Central America. I don't know how much that's going to impact the race because you saw abysmal Latino primary turnout for Biden. And also um, Trump in the polls with Latinos, he's just down by by. 23 points, which is not that much. And I'm assuming a lot of that has to do with low enthusiasm for Joe Biden. I don't know if Trump's going to improve, but if Trump improves by three to four percent, that can offset really any demographic change you have 
ethnically, but you still have people moving. You still have the white college exodus from the Republican Party. We just don't know how big is it going to be. And will Trump be able to get some of the Mormons in the Phoenix metro area who voted third party? Because Mormons are 5% of the state of Arizona. So it's very key he gets their votes back on board. He did win the state by 91,000 votes. Um, and in 2016, however... We saw a little bit of a different margin, but you can see here that uh, Kirsten Sinema only got 30,000 more votes than Hillary Clinton. Martha McSally did not do that well in terms of turning out Republican voters. Republican voters were a little bit demoralized. Doug Ducey did extremely well in the state um, when he won his governorship. However, he was running against somebody who was more closely aligned with Bernie Sanders. So you had a lot of Sinema Ducey voters, and, uh, and it really comes down to how many of those will Donald Trump actually get to vote for him in the 2020 election. So he's going to have to go to places like Phoenix. He's going to have to go to Tucson. Doesn't exactly hurt to go to Flagstaff once. Uh, I mean, he could get maybe a marginal improvement in northern Arizona, especially as Joe Biden is probably not going to turn out as many voters as Hillary Clinton did in some of these, you know, majority native and Latino eastern counties. So as you can see from the map right here, Trump is going to have to do better than Kirsten Sinema did in Maricopa County if he wants to win. Again, Martha McSally lost Maricopa County by 60,000 and lost the election by a little bit less than the end margin in Maricopa. She did a little bit better in Yuma, in uh, Tucson, a little bit better percentage-wise. She still lost the county by 61,000 votes. And if you want to look at 2016, Donald Trump lost it by a similar margin. So I have, I, I did the game plan for Arizona. I put this on my Twitter. If you guys haven't followed me on Twitter, make sure you follow me at Red Eagle Patriot. The link is in the description. For Arizona, Trump must win Yuma by a greater margin than 2016. And if, again, if he marginally improves with Hispanics, it's very possible that he will do this because McSally actually did this back in 2016. He's going to have to continue to max out Prescott, which is Yapavai County, get 40% in Pima County, maybe a marginal improvement of getting some of the third party voters home. And he would have to lose Maricopa by less than 40,000 or just win it. And the key issue to focus on is illegal immigration because Donald Trump has made it clear that illegal immigration doesn't really help any communities in the state of Arizona. Hispanic, white, doesn't really matter. Illegal immigration is a drain on the community. People don't like to have this lawlessness at the border. So, I mean, Trump might not have built the entire wall, but at the same time, Joe Biden doesn't want to deport any people. That's not going to play out so well in Arizona. So you look at this, he still has a fairly good chance to win, but nothing is given. He has to make a fight. He has to make the effort. And this is exactly his game plan for the state. Now, Pennsylvania is a different state. Again, this is a state that is, unlike Arizona, moving in the more Republican direction. Donald Trump turned out a lot of voters. Democrat turnout was not exactly down in Pennsylvania in 2016. Hillary Clinton actually did fairly well in terms of getting her base out to vote, did very well in Philly by doing so. But Donald Trump still beat her because he did very well in the rural part of the state. He did very well in western Pennsylvania, except for um, Pittsburgh. And he didn't exactly do as bad as some of the polls had him doing in places like Bucks County, Chester County. He didn't do well in them, but didn't exactly bomb completely. And he did fairly well in eastern Pennsylvania, and he's going to have to do better. This is another area to focus on. And if the midterms were disastrous for the Republicans in Pennsylvania, yet they ran pretty bad candidates, had very low turnout, and in the exit polls, Trump's approval was still in line, if not one point to the right of the national average. So it seems like Trump has a very good chance to win this state no matter what. Joe Biden may have been born in Scranton, didn't live there for very long. However, he is tied to the Philadelphia area. Um, because Delaware is a big part of Philadelphia, and Trump is going to have to compete. I don't really think it's going to help Biden too much. In fact, it's probably going to hurt him in the western part of the state that he's against uh, things like the USMCA, the fact that he drafted TPP. Donald Trump is not going to let people forget that. But um, Trump in Pennsylvania, he's going to have to limit Biden's gains in Metro Philly. He's going to have to max out western Pennsylvania. He's going to have to continue to. These counties, yeah, 63 to 33, that's not entirely maxed out. Trump could be getting 70 or more in some of these counties in southern Pennsylvania. 
and he's going to have to continue to max out all of the red counties, continue to squeeze as many votes as he can out of that um, big red uh, grapefruit you see here, or what, what any other red fruit you want to say. You could use that as an, as an analogy. And he's also going to have to not ignore eastern Pennsylvania because there's room for improvement in places like Lay County, even Bucks County. Again, a lot of exurbs there. Trump outperformed Romney in Bucks County. He only lost it by 2,600. Did fairly well in terms of the primary turnout for him there. And he was going to have to potentially flip Lackawanna. That might be harder because it's Biden's birth county, but it's still worth a shot, as well as Monroe County. That one he narrowly lost by 600 votes, moved right significantly. I think even if he loses the state, he could win Monroe County. So obviously center, don't ignore center, don't ignore Dauphin. These are population centers. There's a lot of red voters in those counties. You can definitely get them out to vote. It's going to help them. And he's going to have to focus on energy, trade, things like coal, things like steel. And that's going to be able to help him win as much as he possibly can. Now, the last state on here is Wisconsin. Now, again, in 2018, you saw Trump do better in Wisconsin than some of the other Rust Belt states, mainly because he improved in the traditionally Republican WOW counties. In 2016, he underperformed even John McCain in some of them, partially because a lot of people weren't trusting him. Is he a proven conservative? These are the establishment Republican Daily Wire type of Ben Shapiro listeners that have been uh, around for 10 years, the people that loved Mitt Romney. But uh, the rest of the state didn't. Donald Trump has bridged that gap through his presidency. He's done fairly well in 2018. Republicans did fairly well in places like Waukesha, Washington, and Ozaukee. And Trump has brought a whole lot of other voters in the western part of the state, the southwestern part of the state on board. A lot of these, a lot of uh, southwestern Wisconsin barely had any red precincts in 2008. Now almost all the counties are red and there's a lot of room for growth. Um, maybe not this time around, because maybe the pendulum will swing in the other direction in some of these places if the midterms are any indication. But I think Trump will still do better than the midterm Republicans in them. That's why Wisconsin is going to be extremely competitive. And what Trump is going to need to do for the state of Wisconsin, improve in the wow, which should happen, is going to have to do well in Racine and Kenosha. Again, Racine looked very well in the primary looked extremely well, a little too well for Republicans at times. Um, Kenosha is going to go down the wire. It's a bellwether. Um, Scott Walker, I believe, narrowly lost Kenosha County in 2018 when he lost the state. Donald Trump narrowly won it. When he narrowly won the state, he's going to have to do well in Kenosha. Do well in the satellite city part of the state, the small cities like Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, um, Appleton. He's going to have to do well in Brown County, max out the voters, do some rallies in Green Bay. And do fairly well enough in southwest Wisconsin. I don't know what the best place is to hold a rally. Obviously, Madison would be a disaster, but maybe Janesville. Maybe try to flip a place like Greene County. Um, try to get some of these voters on board. And he's going to have to focus on the farmers. He has to focus on f trade, farmers, manufacturing jobs to a certain degree if he's going to want to win the state of Wisconsin. And the key metric will be, will the improvement in WOW offset any losses if there are any in southwest Wisconsin? That is going to be very telling. And we are going to have to see come election day what is going to happen. But make, make no mistake, don't trust the early polls no matter what side you're on. Um, even if Trump is Trump is down by nine nationally next week, he could very well be down five. Um, I think a lot of people that might not be enthusiastic for Trump because of the riot response, I think it'll take some time, but I think they're going to come back to him at the end of the day. You have the debates with Biden. I still think Trump has a 55% chance to win or so, and either way, it's going to come down to these three states, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, or Arizona, and basically, if Donald Trump wins two of them, he's president. So he's going to have to win two out of these three states if he wants to win. Pennsylvania could get him to 269, but he's going to need something else to get to 270. And it's very possible that Donald Trump ends up winning all three. Um, sadly, in a worst case scenario, he could lose all three, but uh, we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to see. These are the three most hotly contested states besides Trump trying to hold the 248-249 firewall that he basically got in the 2018 midterms despite losing by nine nationwide. So he's going to have to improve in just three states in order to win. And we'll have to see what happens. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 40k. Um, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. Join the Discord and subreddit. Donate to the Patreon or subscribe. Star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. 
Red Eagle out.